Welcome to The Real Board Loft. I'm Trip Foreman and this is the Rusty Happy Shovel. Uh, probably one of the most confusing boards in the uh, Rusty lineup. And uh, we're here to demystify the Happy Shovel. Uh, this board, uh, when you look at it online on the Rusty website or on our website or in like, the Rusty brochure, you look at it and you expect, because of the outline, you expect this board to be similar uh, dimensions and volumes to you know a popular groveler like a lost bottom feeder or a Channel Islands average Joe. But when you look more closely at the volume numbers and then also dimensions, it's it's a lot different than those boards. Uh, starting off with the width, I mean, this board is typically about an inch narrower uh, size per size than those boards. And then also the volume numbers because of that are gonna be lower. Uh, in, in using this board, we got to surf this board a lot uh, in, a, in a few different sizes. And what we were able to do over that time is, is really I think answer the question out there that everybody wants to know is, is who is this board for and kind of where, where does it fit into your quiver. Um, with this board, specifically what Rusty was trying to do is they were trying to make a board that had better low end and all over the wave uh, surfing ability and also mushy waves, crummy waves, like flat sections in between good sections, just more connectivity in your, in your whole ride and more flow on the wave than a standard performance shortboard or even a conservative uh, hybrid board. They weren't trying to max out the absolute bottom end grovel, uh, especially like static, passive, standing on your board grovel. With this board, they were trying to make a board for crummy waves that surfed like your, surfed more closely to your high performance shortboard or your conservative hybrid. And so for the very first thing that they did with doing that is rather than going super wide and super thick, they kept the board with a moderate width uh, and then they just extended that width to the nose and to the tail. So if you look at the width of these boards, they're actually about what a conservative hybrid board would be or a full uh, high performance shortboard. But instead of just having that width be just here, they brought it all the way to the nose and all the way to the tail. So the wider nose is always going to give you easier wave catching and more drive, forward drive down the line. The wider tail is going to give you a bigger gas pedal to, uh, to pump and generate speed in soft conditions. But by keeping the width moderate, it still retains that that edge to edge speed, that rail to rail speed that you have uh, in your shortboards or in your like daily driver hybrid board. You don't get the big the big wide board that takes so long to go rail to rail. This board goes rail to rail super fast. Just gets its speed from the wider tail, the wider nose, and then a little bit flatter uh, rocker than what you would see in those two other boards. The other thing that they do is they keep a close eye on the rail thickness. So a lot of those lower end boards, you're gonna see big chunky rails on them, which you can maybe rock a little bit, but you can't really put the rail into the water. This board, they keep a performance rail on it. So the rail's really tapered off. Like when you hold the board underneath your arm, you've really got a, a, a thin rail in your hand compared to the number that you're reading on the stringer for how thick the board is. Like you're like, there's no way that board's that thick, just feeling it. But you actually have to go all the way to the stringer to find that maximum thickness. On the rail, it's, it's significantly thinner. What that allows you to do is when you're generating these really high speeds is to be able to sink that rail in the water in a turn way deeper and with way more confidence than you would on a lot of those thicker railed, uh, you know, lower end uh, gravel boards. So, you know, who's this board for? We, we definitely think it's, it's for somebody who likes that shortboard feel, likes that performance hybrid feel and wants a board with more low end than that, but doesn't want to go to something that feels completely different. They want to have a board that's going to rip the, the mushy, confused, sectiony waves, uh, but have something that is still fast rail to rail and they can still bury a rail in the turn. And that's really where the happy shovel shines is in that type of board. Uh, if you try and upsize this board out of that number range into like your Uber Grobler range, what you then end up, you basically, you're trying to make a board that, that isn't what this board was designed to do. So to give you an example, like with this board specifically, I tried to size it up to my full gravel dimensions. As far as the numbers and the volume, I tried to put it like up at 44. And so it's not gonna be getting to 44 with width and, th and thickness. It's, it's just gonna be getting to 44 with length. And then you end up with a board that's flat rocker for a, a very long distance and doesn't fit into a wave as well as the shorter as the shorter flat rocker on my daily numbers. So that's immediately, you know, the, the numbers tell it to you, but then also the feel you're like, 
well, this board isn't doing what I'm trying to make it do. Maybe I should be trying it in a different size. So I then sized it down into the numbers that were more in my daily driver hybrid numbers, or even like a little bit more generous than that. And then that's where the thing really took off as far as performance. Uh, really fast rail to rail, the ability to bury the rail in turns rather than skidding out at high speeds and, and having al almost more of like a powder snowboard feel, like where you're able to really bury the rail into the snow. Like these, because the rails are so much more tapered off than a, than a standard like uh, full, full volume hybrid, you can generate a lot of speed with that narrow width and then bury the rail through a turn. So bringing it more into the middle of my volume range brought it more into the performance window of the where the board's really going to do well. So again, like if you're looking for that fast rail to rail feel, uh, but just more drive down the line, more forgiveness for crummy waves or even more forgiveness for standing in the wrong place or wanting to stand in different places on the board just for a different style. Uh, the happy shovel is definitely going to do that. Uh, so size wise, these are available full rate, you know, full size wise, as far as 5.0 all the way up to the mid sixes and uh, great board to check out and definitely different. Hope this review cleared up some of the, uh, some of the differences, if not all of them for you. But uh, if you're out there, you're, you're riding your performance shortboard, you've been kind of looking for something for crummier waves with a lot more drive and a lot more fun feel. This is, this is definitely one to check out the happy shovel from Rusty. If you have any more questions, you can check out our website at realwatersports.com forward slash surfing, or you can give us a call at the shop, 252-987-6000.